is faithful. God is true. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, that I get to. I get to. I don't have to. But I get to preach your word. What a privilege and what an honor. And today, I just recognize your greatness, your goodness, and what you're doing. And that you just want to do great things in this place. And so, we say, come. Just continue to move by your spirit. We so honor you and thank you for all that you've done thus far. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So, can we clap it up for these behind? Amen. This, this worship team, what a blessing. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So, I want to start this sermon with a question. Everybody say, she got a question. <laughs> Has anyone ever loved someone so deep that they want the very, very best for them? Anybody? Show us the hands. Raise the hands if you. You love someone so deep. There might be multiple people. But can you just pick one in your mind? You know who I'm talking about in your mind. Raise your hand if you know who I'm talking about. That person in your heart, in your life. There's just a special someone. It could be a son or a daughter. It could be a, a, a niece or a nephew. It could be an auntie. It could be a grandma. It could be whoever. But that, that, that's someone that you love so deep that you want the very, very best for them. And possibly they may have a problem, right? Just let's, just let's just go with me for a minute. They may have this problem and you have the solution because God is giving you wisdom and knowledge and you have the solution to that issue or to that problem or to that circumstance in their life. You know what needs to be done and all you want to do is pour out your heart to them because you want them to get it. You see them like just desperately going in the wrong direction maybe or a situation that's so horrifying and you just know that if they would just follow these instructions, not because you know everything or not because you, you're prideful, you got every answer, no, but, but you just know in the depths of your heart that this is the solution for their problem. And because you love them so deep, you just want to graciously give it to them. You just want to say, this is the key or this is the answer or this is what you need to do. If you could just change your perspective maybe on this and do this, it's going to fix that issue. It's going to resolve the trauma that's been residing in your mind and the, no peace. Has anybody ever been there? Amen. Anybody ever been there that you just felt like God is giving you the answer for a situation? You know, that's, that's okay. He does that, right? We're people of God. He's going to give us the answers. He's going to give us, if we're praying, right? <laughs> and we're seeking God and we love deep, he's going to give us that to be a blessing to someone. And it happens all the time. You know that without a shadow of a doubt, if they listen to you, that everything is going to be okay in their life. And today, I believe even as I read the scriptures today, the apostle Paul felt the same way about the Corinthian church. I felt the Apostle Paul, as I read the letter of Corinth, to the Corinthian church, the book of Corinthians, chapter 1 and 2, it's like the Apostle Paul loves the church. And he just wants to give them some instruction. Because he knows if you just, if you just do this, if you just switch this, you're going to be well. And you're going to walk with God. And you're going to walk with God, not just casually, but you're going to walk with God with might and with power. You're going to walk with God in the spirit. You're going to walk with God and he's going to be with you. You're going to have favor with him. But you've got to listen to the instructions. And Paul, in this portion of scripture that I'm going to be talking about, is giving instruction to the people who are part of the church and followers of Christ. I'm giving you context. These are not people that were lost. These were not people that did not know Jesus. These are people that knew Jesus, that, that were in the church, and he's giving some instruction to. He's pouring out his heart, <laughs> and he's wanting them to get it. And today, you know, what I love about the Word of God, I love many things about the Word of God, but it's just, it blows my mind. First of all, it's living and it's active. And what we read here today that happened over 2,000 years ago is effective today in our life. That we can read this Word and it's so living and active, we can apply it to our life. Even as the Apostle Paul was in love with the church and he's giving instruction to the church because he wants the best for them. He wants them to get it. He wants them to walk with Jesus strong. He doesn't want them to be wimpy Christians. He wants to empower them. He wants to give them the tools to be empowered, which is the Holy Spirit. He wants them to live by the Spirit. He wants the best for them. He's for them. He's laid down his life for them. He's been beaten for the church. He's been in prison for the church. Come on. He's about it. He's not talking something and not showing the action. He is backing his words all the time. 
Lord. Come on, somebody. Just as it was over 2,000 years ago, guess what? Today, I'm going to pour out my heart to the bride of Christ. I'm going to pour out my heart to you, to the people. Why? Because I love you. Well, Pastor Liz, you don't even know me. I love the church. You are the church. You are the bride of Christ. You are the one I laid down my life for. First for Jesus. Then I said yes to what he asked me to. He said, will you serve my people? Will you serve my bride? Will you pour out your life? Will you sacrifice and put you second? Will you step into what I've called you to? Will you answer the assignment? Will you preach the truth? Will you sacrifice? Will you love? Will you give it your all? Will you make your life count? Yeah. I said, yes, Lord. With your grace, <laughs> with your help, with your Holy Spirit. And lastly, I said, if you are with me, I'll go anywhere. Just let me know you're with me. I have to know that he's with me. If he's with me, there's nothing, there's nothing I cannot do. That's how I really feel. There is absolutely nothing. There's no mountain too high. There's no valley too low. There is nothing that I cannot do if he's with me. If he's called me to it, he's going to give me the wisdom. He's going to give me the grace. He's going to give me the strength. He's going to give me the perseverance. He's going to give me the fortitude. He's going to make me strong in him. He's going to make me consistent. I'm going to be disciplined. Because I'm going to beat this flesh with some prayer and fasting. I'm going to say, God, I got this with you. If you are with me, there's absolutely nothing I can't do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. I believe it. I ain't talking it. I believe it. I want you to know here today that that's how God feels about you. He is so for you. He is pouring out his love letter to you. He wants you to get it. And he just uses messengers like me and other people in the body of Christ to provoke you, to get to you, to help you to understand in the flesh. You can see me, you can hear me, but there's my spirit that's living, that's just connected to him. It's just from the Lord. But sometimes we need flesh to see. And he's given us these gifts. I'm a gift to you, whether you know it or not. My daddy, Dr. Emilio, is a gift to me and my husband. Pastor Packy and Pastor Janet Thompson are a gift to me and my husband. And he allows us to be and walk with them. To talk with them. To see God. They're, they're God living inside of them. But pouring their wisdom on us. And loving us. And standing with us. And holding up our hands when we get tired. He's given gifts in this house. To hold up Pastor John in arms when we get tired. We are a gift to one another. But today I want to pour out to you. I want like the Apostle Paul poured out his heart. To the Corinthian church. I want to pour out my heart to you. Because God is speaking to his church. And he wants you to be ready for his return. You need to be ready for his return. And I believe that these six verses have the power to literally transform the trajectory of your life. I believe that if you sit and you say, God, let me hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. That it has the possibility. I say possibility because I've been pastoring this church for 19 and a half years. And I see year after year, month after month, people come in and hear the same word. And some go this way and some go that way. It ain't me. I'm still here. I'm still the same person with more wisdom, more knowledge, more understanding, more grace, more love. What are you doing with the word that is released when you leave this house? That's why I say it's a possibility that these six verses can literally transform your life, the trajectory of your life. Catapult you to places you never even thought or imagined you can walk with God. Do you hear what I'm saying today? Do you hear what I'm saying today? Yes. The word of God is powerful. And here we go. 2 Corinthians is my text. 
chapter 6, starting with verse 14. Excuse me. Hallelujah. We're going to respect the house of God today. I feel in my spirit when I was preparing, when I was coming, let's be still. Let's dial in and focus. The enemy does little tricks to us. Then I just teach everybody something. Before you come in here, go to the bathroom. Let me just teach for a minute. Pause. This is how the enemy works. Distraction, moving here, there, late, this. No. Order in the house of the Lord. Order in the house of the Lord. If you have to use the bathroom today, please go right now. Just go. There's no condemnation. There's no nothing. I just need to teach because what he does, he will want you to miss what he has. This is not me. This is him. This is what he said today for his people. So when we come into the house of God, we got to be ready. We got to be ready to receive. We can't be distracted. We can't be all over the place. Hear what God is saying. He's trying to get our attention. So if you have to go, it's okay. Go. No worries. I love you. I'm not upset. But I just need to teach the people of God. You don't know if no one tells you. Do you see what I'm saying? No one tells you. How do you know? Now if you have conditions and you, please go. There's no condemnation, but just to teach. When we come in, let's be ready. Let's be prepared to hear what God's got to say. Because it's distracting. It, it, it messes with what God is doing. He's touching hearts and you, excuse me, excuse No. No, let's be respectful to one another. The title of this message is Separate Yourself. Tell your neighbor, separate yourself. Separate yourself. Amen. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial, which is Satan? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? He's asking the question. What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separated, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Uh, says the Lord Almighty, therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify, this is 7-1, ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit. Perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Today, I just want to give you some pointers. As the Apostle Paul admonished the church of Corinth. I also want to admonish you, starting with one. Verse 14 and 15 says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers, for what does righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Satan? Or what does a believer have in common with the unbeliever? Point number one, admonishment number one, yoke yourself with Christ. If you're taking notes, number one is yoke Yourself with Christ. Binding relationships with non-believers is going to weaken your Christianity. Church, he's being very clear in this portion of scripture. Do not be unevenly yoked. Do not connect 
inside circle I'm talking about. There's going to be balance to this, amen? There's going to be balance. Wait for the balance. Don't stone me yet. <laughs> your inner circle, those people you call your friends, those people you do life with on a regular basis, those people that are right here, close and personal, amen? Those are the people you want to bind yourself with that love Jesus, that they're not non-believers because binding relationships with non-believers will, it, it won't, it just here, it will. It, it may not be maybe, it will weaken your Christianity. It will weaken your commitment to God. It will weaken eventually at some point your integrity. It will at some point will weaken your standards. I don't know if anybody can relate to me, but I remember walking with Jesus as a young 20 year old and I connected myself with a young man that didn't love Jesus like I love Jesus. Hello somebody. Can anybody relate? Don't raise your hand if you don't want to. You can relate if you want to. You can just kind of look forward. It's going to be okay today. It doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It can be a friendship. Hello, somebody. Your sister, your, your, uh, yeah, let me keep it, let me keep it here. Your buddy, your friend, your dude, your homeboy, whatever you want to call them. It doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It can be any relationship. Connect myself with somebody who doesn't love Jesus as much. You, I thought that I was going to pull him up. Oh, no, 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 no. So much easier for him to pull me down. Yeah. Has anybody ever seen the analogy with the chair? Hello? Has anybody seen the analogy with the chair? No. Yes. Come on, Tiny. Help me out. I just got to do it. I know we're in front of the thing, but, you know, hopefully you can see past this. Tiny, can you please stay on the chair? You're going to stand. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Tiny. You can say it Pull me up. Can y'all see me? Can you see me, Candace? Pull me up, Tiny. Hey. Oh, pull me. Never listen, you know, believe in listening to worship. You know, 
play this up. Why? Because unbelievers sometimes they're just they're listening to what unbelievers do. F this, mother F of this. Yeah, that's what they listen to. And that's what you're going to write in your car and listen to too. You okay with that? You think Jesus is okay with that? You think Jesus is okay for you bumping that foolishness? Do you really believe that? Okay, I got quiet real quick. Do you really think that it's okay for you to watch that video with the girls with their nakedness? Do you really believe that that's okay? Their breasts are out, their butt cheeks are up here. What? what? You think it's okay? Hello? Oh, no one want to look at me now. Look at me. I'm looking at you, sweetheart. Yeah, look at me. Yeah, let's get real in the house of God. It's not okay. It's not okay with Jesus. I'm talking to the believer today. I'm talking for the one that knows Jesus. If you don't know Jesus and you're sitting in this room, listen to the message and just receive it and learn from it. But I'm talking to the one that knows that's walking with Jesus and still is compromising and trying to yoke up with some unbelievers. It's not okay. You will eventually compromise your walk with God and may end up in hell. It's not okay. The instructions are separate yourself. Do not yoke yourself with unbelievers. But number one, yoke yourself with Christ. He's not saying to isolate, come on, here's the balance, from the non-believers. He's not saying shun them. He's not saying, oh my God, don't get messed with them. No. How will they know to come to Jesus if they're not around us? Come on, somebody say balance, Pastor Liz. Yeah, say balance. So yes, they're not in my inner circle, but I'm going to be all around them because Jesus was. Jesus was extending the hand. Jesus was loving on them. Jesus was teaching them. Jesus was showing what kindness is. Do you hear what I'm saying today? Yeah. We don't shun, we don't isolate, we don't talk about, we don't be judgmental. Yeah. We don't act like we're better than, we don't act uppity, we don't think that our stuff don't stay. Come on somebody. We love people. We show them how God reached out to us. That's what he wants us to do for them. Yeah. So I'm not talking about isolation, I'm talking about your inner circle. Not to lock up yourselves, themselves into personal or business relationships that could cause them to compromise their faith. So also we're talking about personal and business. Sometimes we get into business with people and they have different standards. Can I just talk to the adults or somebody who's in business or want to go into business? Don't yoke yourself with someone in business that doesn't know Jesus. They want to probably cheat and have not integrity and you'll want to do things right. So why would you yoke yourself up? With somebody, so you're a Christian rapper, but you got this demonic beat. Somebody making your beats that's demonic. That's Hello, so no, I know it's real because I had to counsel some people. Hello, somebody. Yeah. No, that's unclean. Why would you put what's your clean with their unclean? It will contaminate your clean. Well, they got the bomb beats. Yeah, well, there's someone else that loves Jesus that got bomb yeah. beats. Yes. Why don't Jesus yes. just help you with that? Uh, amen. Come on. Yeah. Hello. Amen. All right, we're moving on. Amen. Number two, you ready? Number two admonishment is walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Number one, yoke yourself with Christ. Number two, walk in the spirit. Verse 16 says, what agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them and I will be their God and they will be my people. Corinth had an abundance of temples. This is why they're using this terminology of pagan deities. There was a bunch of temples in Corinth, and there were pagan deities, pagan gods. So they, the, the, the recipients, the Corinthian church, understood what Paul was saying when he said this. So the letter, you know, were, was able to visualize the contrast what the apostle Paul was intended to say. So those who follow Christ are not known by a building. They are known as those in whom the Spirit of God lives in. We're not known the church as a building. We are learn about how the Spirit of God lives in us. So the Spirit of God that lives inside of you is very important in how you walk out in the Spirit. And that's why number two is walk in the Spirit. Because those who follow Christ are not known by the building, but they are known for the Spirit of God that lives in them. What spirit are you walking in? The church is not where believers go. It is who they are. This is called the church. We understand that. But you are the church. 
and how you present yourself in the spirit of God that you walk in is going to either attract or really retract or offend folks. Amen. God is not waiting for his people in some stained glass setting. Come on, somebody. He is always with you. He is always with the people of God. God has walked with, has called us to walk in a manner that people recognize the God and the Jesus in us. He's called us to walk in such a manner that they can see Jesus in us. There's something different about them. I may not know what it is, but there's something different. My question to you is, can you see, can you see Jesus? Tell your neighbor, can you see Jesus in me? Can people see Jesus in you? That is the question. Can people see Jesus in you? Can people hear Jesus in you? Can people see what you put on, what you wear? See Jesus in how you present yourself? Not just with your mouth. This is cheap talk. When that car just crossed over on the lane and cut you off, <laughs> blankety. Oh, 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 oh. Let's just move on. Somebody say, move on. Move on. Move on. Number three, separate yourself. Somebody say, separate yourself. separate yourself. So we have yoke yourself with Christ, walk in the spirit, and number three admonishment is separate yourself. Verse 17 and 18. Very clearly, therefore, come out. Not stay in. <laughs> come out from among them and be separated, says the Lord, not says the pastor, not says your friend, not, no, says the Lord. The Lord. Touch no unclean thing. Not some unthink, not some, not a little, no, 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 none, no, nothing. Touch no unclean thing that I will receive you. Help us. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, Lord. Yes. Says the Lord Almighty. Amen. 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 Separate. Separation from the world involves more than just keeping our distance from sinful places or practices. Hear what I just said. Separation from the world involves more than keeping our distance from sinful practices or places. It means staying close to God. That's a little bit deeper. It means staying close to God. It involves more than avoiding certain entertainment that leads to sin. It's more than that. It extends into how we spend our time and how we spend our money. See, those are two very important things to us. Our time and our money, boy. Ooh, don't mess with our time. Don't mess with our money. It is very important, but it extends to that. Separation produces intimacy. Separation produces intimacy. God is calling us to be the salt because he wants us to win this world for Jesus. He wants us to win the loss. But the problem is, I love this statement. Pastor John Shiver says this. We are trying to win a world that we want to be like. That's the problem. We are trying to win a world that we want to be like. See, we want to dress like them. We want to be in the who's who. We want to be in the nose nose. We're trying to win a world that we want to be like. And God is saying, no, no. Come out from them. Come out from them. I want to do something fresh in you and you. But if we look like the world, what is going to make us attractive? This is nothing new underneath the sun. This is God saying, reminder, newsflash. I said this, I'm saying this, do you hear me? The more you separate yourself, the more different you look like, and the more different you will become, and the more attractive you will become, the more different you will look like from them. He's saying come out from among them. Why do we want to look like them? Why do we want to speak like them? Why do we want to sound like them? Why do we want to look like them? We're trying to win a world that we want to look like. That, that just resonated with me when I heard that man of God say that. Separation produces intimacy. Separation produces a spirit-led life. 
Separation produces the power of God working in you and through you. Yeah. We want the power. We want the glory. We want to see signs and wonders. God's called you to separate yourself. God's called us to consecration. God's called us to holiness. God's called us to live a different life. Separation produces the power of God working through you and I. I'll never forget, God has always challenged me in my walk to be different, to separate yourself. When I went to Bible college, I couldn't do what everybody did. It wasn't that I was better. He says, I'm calling you to this. Separate yourself. When they're going to go hang out, you come with me. You hang out with me. I'm your date tonight. He said, go lay the blanket out. Me and you, baby. Yes. Go. I want to spend time with you. Let's go. Let's talk. I want to speak to you. I want to pour things in you. Can you say no to this to be with me? Because I'm doing something. See, we just think about the now, but there's a greater thing. God sees five years from now. Ten, he yeah. saw my today. He yeah. saw, come on, he saw me here standing 22 years later, yeah. preaching his word, yeah. walking in the power of his might, seeing signs and wonders, yeah. going to the nations, yeah. seeing the mute speak, seeing the blind, come on, the blind seeing the mute speak. He's called me to that, but it didn't start today. See, I went to Peru, and I've been to Dominican, I've been to Kenya. I've seen miracles. I've seen people come out of wheelchairs. Come on. I've been a part of it. Yeah. That didn't start five years ago. It didn't start two years ago. It didn't start today. I didn't just wake up this morning, I'm going to preach the word. No, no. Back then, in 2000, when he called this Puerto Rican girl to leave New York and her job and her money and her family to come to New Orleans to go to Bible college and make $4.25. Hello, at the mall. Resigning from a teaching position. Come on, somebody. Nobody wants to hear that. You just want to get the glory. You just want to be a part of the glory. You just want to be used. No! It don't work like that. Separate yourself. Live holy. Watch come down your mouth. Because you can't do what everybody else is doing. He didn't force me. He gave me a choice. Which one? You're going to be with me or you're going to go to a movie? He says, I'm calling you to be with me. He says, I'm going with you. Come on, Oh, there was no competition. See, because let me say something. When you've been touched by God, I don't care what anybody says. When you've been touched by God, you will walk different. You will live different. You will speak different. You're not going to be perfect, but you want it. And you're going to go after it, and you're going to pursue that thing. You're going to pursue that thing, which is him. And those things that you think were important, the buddies, the friends, the sex, the, that's a nonsense. That's just a waste of your time. Jesus helps. When you've been touched by him, I'm not saying tickled. It's different. A lot of you have been tickled. There's no pursuit. There's no fire. There's no passion. There's no love. You just do church. You do life. You're going to heaven. It's good. Love you. But I'm talking to those today that say, There's nothing to go back to. There's nothing to go back to. There's nothing attractive enough. 
There's not enough money enough. There's not enough house enough, a car enough, man enough, woman enough. There's nothing enough. I'm not going back. But when you've been tickled, you go back. It's, you've been tickled. You've been, you love Jesus. You're going to make it. I'm so proud. But that's not what I'm talking about today. Yeah. When there's something burning in the inside of you, it will cause you to lose sleep. Yeah. It will cause you to rise up. Yeah. It will cause you to intercede. Yeah. It will cause you to say, God, I want more. Yeah. It will cause you to dance and say, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. I'm not here for you. Out of 
reverence for God. I want to reverence him. I want to honor him with every part of my body and spirit. Purifying ourselves is twofold, church. It's turning away from sin, but it's also turning to God. We could turn away from sin, but then replace it with another thing. That may be nice. But no, no, it's turning towards God. Perfecting holiness did not mean that the Corinthian church or we would be perfect. It meant for them and us to work out this maturity and work it out in faith. Work out our maturity. Work out this faith. It means to grow up. It means perfecting. Perfecting. Walking out maturity. Growing. Learning. Being discipled. God has provided us with all of the resources. We have the word of God. We have books. We have sermons. We have lessons. We have teachings. We have all this stuff to walk out in our maturity. We have, most important, the spirit of God that lives inside of us that we have empowered. We have been endued with power from on high to walk it out. And he's calling us like never before in this season to do what he's called us to do, to separate ourselves, to consecrate ourselves. So starting again from the title of this message, God is admonishing his church. Admonishing means to warn. He's admonishing. He is provoking. He is asking. He is warning. He's saying, separate yourself to him that you may walk in all that he has for you, that everything he has for you on this earth you would be able to walk out with the power of the Holy Spirit. So today I close with this. I close with a question. What are you yoked to? What are you yoked to? Are you yoked to Christ? Are you yoked to the enemy? Because if it's not Christ, I'm here to tell you it's the enemy. You cannot be yoked to Christ and anything else. It's one or the other, and there's no in between. And that's a real word, and it's a hard word, but it's a true word. There's no in between. There's one way, the Bible says. There's one way, and his name is Jesus. So today, with all the love in my heart, with all that I have, because I want to see the church be separated coming out from among them, that we may be really what God's called us to be, the salt of the earth. That we would be the light on this earth like Jesus was. Can you look at yourself today and say, I am yoked with Jesus. I am that light you're speaking about. There are many in this room that can say yes. There may be some that can say no, but I want to. And that's a good place to be. Because today is the day of salvation. Today is the day the Lord says, come on, I'm bidding you to come, I'm bidding you to come, I'm bidding you to come. Let's start this, let's start this fresh again. Let's do a new day. It's a new day. What happened yesterday, what happened, it's over. Today is a new day. Today I'm calling you to separate yourself. Today I'm calling you to live in purity. God loves us, he's for us, and he just, he is determined and relentless to go after you. And this is why the word of God is preached like this in this house. Because he will not stop and he will not quit. I could just, I'm just responsible for houses of prayer. He is relentless to chase you and to pursue you and to not allow you to live a settled Christianity, a compromised Christianity, a lukewarm Christianity. You will make it. If you're lukewarm, he's going to spit you out of your mouth. This is not a fear tactic. This is the word of God. It's the word of God. I don't need to put fear in you. Who the heck am I? I'm nobody. I'm, I'm a servant of God. This is the word. If I don't tell you, who's going to tell you? Father, let's just bow our heads before the Lord. Lord, right now, you alone know the condition and the heart of man in this house, God. You alone know, Lord. And we are just asking you today, God. We want to be separated. We want to separate ourselves. But God, we just got to be honest and real. It is difficult. We love you. 
We want you, some of us. Can't say everybody in here because I don't know everyone's heart. And I don't know everyone in this place. But Lord, I don't believe anybody wants to go to hell. So Lord, I just pray right now, God, that you would just speak to the heart of man and woman in this room. And that, Lord, you would just touch our hearts to be honest. And that you would just have your way in this place, God, today. That you would be glorified, that you would be honored, but that, Lord, we would be honest with ourselves, God. And today is a day of salvation, God. Today is a day. This is not anyone else's walk. This is our walk with you. We're not responsible for anybody else, God. We're just responsible for ourselves, God. And I just pray today, God, that, Lord, as the people of God heard the word, they would hear God just lives with the desperation. It's a desperation cry. It's a desperation call that you don't want to see anyone, anyone lost. And I pray God today that if there's anyone in this room, if you have not been yoked with Christ and you want to be yoked with Christ and you want a fresh start and you want to do this thing with God, you want to raise your hand right now, I would love to pray for you. Thank you. I see it. Yeah. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Rededication is a good thing. You know, I want to start fresh again. I need it. I need it. I need it. Lord, I just pray right now. Thank you, sister. I see that. Yeah. I need God. Lord, I just pray for those that would say today, I am yoked with Christ. I know that I know that I know I am. And I'm walking with God. But I have been weary and well doing. I'm just struggling a little bit right now. I am just tired, and I need the grace, and I need the fortitude, and I just, I would just love for you to pray for me right now, to just keep on running this race. If that's you, raise your hand today. Raise it high so I can see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty. Amen. And for those that are saying, I am burning for Jesus right now. I have committed myself. I have separated myself. I am, I am purified. I am setting myself apart. I am about it. I want you to raise your hand because there's those in those rooms today. Amen. Keep on running. Keep on running. Keep on running. I want to pray for everyone today because we all fit in one of those categories and we've probably been in every one of those categories. Amen. Y'all can look at me now. We've all been probably in every single one of those categories. There's no judgment in this room. There's only the love of God in here. But there is a provoking. There's a provoking word that's being preached from the pulpit. Because these are the last days, church. These are the last days. We're living in the last days. Today could be the day that Jesus came back. And I don't want anyone to miss it. I don't want anyone to miss it. So I just want to pray with you. If everyone can just stand to their feet. And just lift your hands to the Lord. If you want to come to this altar, you can. For those that raise their hand, just if y'all want to come, just come. I want to pray. For any one of you, it doesn't mean any specific. I just want to pray. If you feel like you want to come, I never want to hold anybody up from walking or just coming and just making that profession, whatever it is. Any of the three groups, it doesn't matter. I just want, just want to come up. You just want, you just want God. Just, this is just your time with you. Just come up. Make room for everybody, guys. Also, pray people help them out. It doesn't matter which group, which group you were in. That's not what I don't, that doesn't matter. God knows right now. Hallelujah. Lord, you see your children. Whatever group, God, you know which one, you know who they are. And I just want to speak right now to them, God. And I just want to say, the Lord is with you, mighty warriors. Come on, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Lord is with you, mighty warrior. I just feel the Lord say to those in the second group, don't quit. <laughs> He's with you. He's going to give you the grace right now. He's giving you the strength to run. He's going to give you the endurance to keep running. To keep running this race. To keep enduring. To keep pressing on. Keep on running, mighty warrior. He's right there with you. He's picking you up when you are tired. He's right there. He says, just call on his name.
Jesus. I need you. Oh, sweet ladies, now raise your hand. You are forgiven. You are washed. Walk with Jesus. Don't get weary in well doing. Connect to your sister in the Lord. Ask for prayers. And for those here right now that are even watching, that are burning for Jesus, keep running and keep burning for him. Pursue him with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. Write down, I'm burning for Jesus. Write down whatever you need. They're watching. I'm burning for Jesus. Or I need Jesus. I declare you will keep running. We are praying for you. We are lifting up your hands right now. We are declaring that God is with you. And he is for you. And he's going to give you the grace and the strength to run this place. Keep running. We love you, House of Prayer Online. We bless you. Come on, God is with you. Be encouraged today.